Hey there kids, welcome to another math video. This is for grade five, Eureka Math, module two, lesson 21. And this is the homework. And uh, if you are not sure what this is all about, go watch the problem set video because we're taking division to the next level. Uh, we're using the standard algorithm. We're gonna check. Uh, we will be um, really just doing that with larger and larger numbers as we continue out through fifth grade. So. Uh, if you check the objective at the bottom, it says divide two and three digit dividends by two digit divisors with a single digit quotient and make connections to a written method. This is the written method standard algorithm using the check to help you. So let's get started. Uh, <clears throat> this one's already done, so let's start here. We're gonna use our divisor on the outside and put your dividend on the inside. So they swap places. And then we're going to remember, you kind of estimate um, to figure out where you're going to put, well, to figure out what to put, and then we have to think about where are we gonna put it in our uh, quotient. Now the quotient is this thing that looks like an answer line, but it's not just an answer line. Everything is still divided up into place value positions. When our objective says, that we have single digit quotients, a single digit quotient is gonna be located right here in the ones place. So everything that you have should be in the ones place. Um, and at some point in the very near future, we'll have larger quotients. And so then you'll need to bump it out to the tens place and maybe the hundreds place and so on. So anyway, they start us out pretty easy. And this is the kind of mental math step. You know, if I had 40, it sure would be easier to count because four, uh, 8, 12, 16 would get me close to here. I don't actually have 40, and so I have less than that. So I could still guess four, and then it's really just kind of a trial and error. You want to get as close as you can without going over that whole price is right kind of thing. But we actually multiply with the number that we have, not the rounded number. This is just kind of in your head, you're dreaming. This is reality. So four times seven is 28, carry the two, that's what happens with that one. Four times three is 12, plus two is 14. And then you subtract and you have 10. Now with your remainder, remember, you're gonna put your little R10 up here, and it's not in the tenths place, it's just, we're just throwing it off to the side so that you can then do your check which is to take the outside numbers here, and if these are getting in your way, I apologize, but you're gonna take your outside numbers, you're gonna take your divisor and your quotient, and I'm gonna set it up using standard algorithm form, not this, this is not helpful for children, because when you have to regroup and carry over, you might lose track or not be sure of where to put it if it's on a horizontal line. So seven times four is 28, carry the two over, four times three is 12 plus two is 14. Now here's that 148, okay? Just make that connection. You should get the same thing you got in the middle. But now what? We're gonna add our remainder so that we can figure out what we started with. And that should take you right back here to your original dividend. And when you get that, you put a star. Or happy face or something that makes you happy. And again, hopefully you already did your homework and you're just checking it to make sure you got all the parts exactly where they should be. Next one, 49 on the outside and 261 on the inside. And so again, thinking about where would I put my uh, number in the quotient? 26 is not divisible by 49, this is too small, so we're gonna use the whole 261. I'm wishing I had, this is in my head, I wish I had 50 because it would be so much easier to count to 25 five times. So I'm gonna use that five, hoping to get close. Five times nine, 45, carry the four over to the next place value position. Five times four is 20 plus four is 24. Subtract, and again, that compare step, I kind of didn't do it here because I was like, well, that's less, but we're just gonna put that up. You have to have something less than the divisor as your leftovers. So let's think about that. If you can't take five from one, you could go here and take one and give 10. And then you can do your subtraction, and you can still do subtraction here. So when you compare, remember, you wanna have less than your divisor. So I have to have less. If I have um, 
like I was showing on the previous video, I could have all the way up to 48 as my leftovers and it's still okay. But now I'm gonna do my check and it's gonna be 49 times five. Nine times five, 45. It's like you're doing everything twice. Five times four is 20 plus four is 24. You get that 245. And then we have our 16 that is our remainder. We're gonna add that. So six and five is 11, four, five, six, two comes down. We get 261, make an active check with your eyeballs, put a little star when you get it right, and then you can move on. Next one, 82 on the outside, 574 on the inside. Give yourself nice straight columns, practice your very best handwriting. 57 is not divisible by 82, so we're gonna go to the next column. This is in the ones place. If I had 80, I would want a multiple of eight that is close to 57. Remember, you're trying to get as close as you can without going over. So if I use seven, because seven times eight is 56, I'm gonna have a little extra. So let's see what happens. Seven times two, 14. Then I have 56 here, plus one is 57. My goodness, that's lovely. So check is very easy because we don't have anything left over. So it's just 82 times seven. Seven times two is 14, 56, 57. And you immediately get what you started with. So that's a really easy problem. Nothing left to add. Next one, 58 on the outside, 464 on the inside. Again, looking because just because the objective says single digit quotients, like I know that I'm only gonna have an answer here, but out in the real world, you never really know where you're gonna put the first digit in the quotient because you have to look at the size of the numbers. So 46 is not divisible by 58, uh, but 464 will be. So then I think, hmm, I wish I had 60 because it'd be easier to count by sixes. And I want to count all the way up to something that's close to 46. Now, 6 times 8 is 48. So I know that if I had 60, I could try an 8. If I use less than that, if I have a 7, and I have 7 times roughly 60, I would get 42, and I'd have a lot left over. So you decide. You use either a 7 or an 8. I'm kind of thinking that it might be 8 because 8 times 8 is 64, and I see that here. And when I carry over the 6, then I have 8 times 5 is 40, plus 6 is 46. So I'm kind of looking ahead at what I'm going to get. And I got another problem with no remainder. So 58 times 8, 8 times 8, 64. There's your 40 plus 6. And there's your compared answer. So that one was like painfully easy. And let's do the last one. 79 on the outside and 640 on the inside. And so if I had 80, that would be really nice because then it would be 80 and eight times eight is 64. So I have just under that, so I know I'm gonna have a little remainder. Eight times nine is 72. And then I have eight times seven, 56 plus seven, 63. And then do your subtraction. I'm kind of looking at this as a whole, like 40 minus 32, so I know it's gonna be eight. And then do your multiplication of 79 times your quotient, which is eight. Nine times eight, 72. And then 56 plus seven. And add your remainder. And eight and two, and carry. And that comes down, and this one comes down, and then you have your 640. So uh, hopefully those are pretty clear. That, that's a real standard approach uh, to long division with some nice easy problems that aren't going to throw you too far off, hopefully. Let's straighten this out. All right. It takes Juan exactly 35 minutes by car to get to his grandmother's. The nearest parking area is a four-minute walk from her apartment. One week, he realized that he spent five hours and 12 minutes traveling to her apartment and then back home. 
Okay, so we have our total time to and from. How many round trips did he make to visit his grandmother? Okay, so it can help you if you make like uh, a little picture. So the, the strategy for word problems is read, draw, write. So you read it and then you go, okay, what are they talking about? So we've got a distance from home to grandmother's. And the, the trip is broken into two pieces. It's a 35 minute chunk. And then we have a four minute walk. So you could say, all right, if I was gonna make a, like a tape diagram, I would have a 35 minute piece and then I would have a four minute piece. And all that together, I like, I really prefer having the total on top, but I'm squishing it. That would take 39 minutes but that's just one way. Okay, so if you wanna know round trips, you've got to also go back. Now how you do that, you can do uh, 39 plus 39 or 39 times two, it's really up to you. And then you get your 18 and 78, and this is minutes because it's minutes and minutes Thank goodness it's all the same unit here, not here. Here we have hours and minutes. So the next thing is to uh, take our total amount of time, the five hours and 12 minutes, and because this is minutes, I would like to really know how many minutes I have in this chunk of time and combine it with that, but all minutes. So if you take one hour, you should know that that's how many minutes. It's 60 minutes. So if you have five hours, then you have 60 five times. So that would make 300. But you also have 12 minutes that are the extra. So we're going to add those on. And this is all the minutes for traveling. OK, now that's the total. But we know that it's 78 minutes for both ways or one round trip. So now that we have the total and we have the round trip, we're going to take that total. Let me write the expression first and divide it. This is just the expression. So this is like the how do you set it up? Now that we have this, which looks a lot like all the other problems, you can use your standard algorithm. to set it up and to proceed to solve. And if you look at 31, it's too small for 78, so you gotta go all the way over here, just like we did before, having one digit in the quotient. I wish I had eight or 80 so that I could count by that and get as close to the first two digits as possible. If I had eight, I would multiply by four and I would get 32. And that's really, really close because I don't actually have eight. So you could use a three or a four as your first guess in the quotient. If I try four, hoping to get really close, four times eight is 32, and then four times seven is 28, 29, 30, 31. So I kind of lucked out with my guess for four, and I got right on. So the answer is four round trips. There you go. Okay, and hopefully you guys got that right. And I bet you think it's over, but it's not because there's one tiny problem on the back. <laughs> so turn the page and take a moment to answer this final question. Now, if you didn't do this already, pause the video and try to get it done on your own. Really, really try to do it on your own. Look at this word form of the number and then here's your standard form. How many 84s are in 672? So pause the video and solve it. And if you're finished, then you would set it up with six and seven and two, and that's like a tiny six. Let me erase that and make it normal. I don't know if you know or if you've recognized, but I like really big numbers so that they uh, can be easily lined up. It's all about place value. 67 cannot be divided by 84, so you're going to bump it over to 672. Ooh, it's blurry. I wish I had 80 because it'd be easier to get a multiple of 8 
near 67, kind of like if I had eight times eight, I would have 64. Now I have more than that, so I can still try the eight. Eight times four is 32. Eight times eight is 64, 65, 66, 67. And look at that, wasn't that easy? I hope you did it on your own because you could have been very successful with that one. So there are eight 84s in 672. And there's your answer. And click subscribe and come back again. That was pretty easy today. Not too bad, and I hope I was helpful. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.